Aloha, I'm Marcia Joyner, and this is Cannabis Chronicles, a 10,000 year odyssey. And there's so much to learn about cannabis, hemp, and all of the other things that go with this plant. And in the time we've been on the air, we have tried to, we have attempted to learn, to discover and explore these 10,000 years with this plant. And today, we are going to talk to a dear friend, and you all know I only talk to dear friends, who just produced the, what is it, the annual cannabis expo on the Big Island. And Grant Norris is with the patient, what is a patient union? Yeah, let me get it right now. Hawaii Patients Union, and you're the chair. Is that correct, Brent? That's correct, Marcia. <laughs> yes, thank you. And so you, you had this wonderful event, and so many people told me they came from all over the world to be with you. So tell us about the event. About what happened? Well, thank you, thank, and, and thanks for asking. And, and we did have people from all over the world come and attend. It was, uh, you know, this is our third annual event, so it was really nice to see those, uh, see the tide sort of turning and, and, and helping everyone from our vendors to our sponsors get brand recognition in the space. And the platform has evolved now to um, include, you know, we had people from eight different states participating and, in all of the islands, and this year's focus was really more about elevating our consciousness towards a loving role with cannabis than our events in the past, which focused on um, legislation and some of the, the things that we need to do to improve patients' lives. In this case, we shot for love, and we wanted to make sure that everyone that attended our event felt like they were loved. And and by all measures, we've accomplished that goal this year. So um, that was our goal, and that's what we did, and everyone had a great time celebrating cannabis. So what were some of the events that happened during the, the weekend? Well, <clears throat> thank you. Yeah, we, uh, we planned an event with an organization called Be Heroic as part of their pollination tour. Uh, Nikki Florio came over um, with a co-sponsorship from... Um, uh, the Tahoe Hemp Company and Green Collar Technologies and put an event on Tuesday, June 11th. Um, and that was a, a really great event. I'm not sure that type of information had been cut here before. And then we went to well, what, Friday. What, was, on, no, what, was the, what did they, you say, it hasn't been put on before. What, what did they do? Um, much of the discussion there was about climate engineering um, and how everything from 5G technologies to agrochemical te technologies, the way they're affecting our pollinators, uh, responsible for about 40% of the pollination for our food uh, in Hawaii. Um, so those, those topics, I don't think we're talked about at this depth in an in a event of this type. Well, does the 5G interfere with pollination? It does, apparently, um, and I'm, I'm no expert in this area. Um, I'm, I'm really a neophyte. I'm just learning about it myself. Um, but Be Heroic, the nonprofit behind this, uh, has so much information to share about the topic. You know, I would encourage people to go to the Be Heroic website and, Be Heroic. and check out. Yeah, we will. Be Heroic. And because that, that's... And now the phone companies all sell 5G, but if it's going to interfere, then I'm 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 a, I'm surprised or amazed, or maybe we haven't done enough research to find out what it does, how it affects, and if it does affect. What now? Right. Because it floats through out there, would that interfere with the pollination? Let's say of the bees, would that interfere? Do you think? Uh, I, I so I don't really understand 
how it how it all works. Um, and you know, that's I, I don't understand how so much of it works. And that's why we bring these experts in. Um, is because they, they really are on top of their game. And, and they were nice enough to fly in from Lake Tahoe to do the wow. presentation. So it's be so we heroic? Just, we just bring people together. Be heroic is what you said? B-E-E, -E -E. heroic, yeah. Two E's in B. So that tells me this has to do something with the B's. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. So what else? Tell me more. What else happened? Well, then we jumped into a celebration of Medical Cannabis Day um, with, uh, of course, Dr. Otto's Dr. support. Dr. Otto, um, yes. And the support of our uh, patients' union um, holding that event at the Moku Pa 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 Discovery Center here in Hilo. It was a really well-received event uh, with opening remarks from Senator Russell Ruderman, um, talking about the past uh, legislative session and our own Alana Miller uh, elevating that event to this more of a loving state with singing and um, really a, a celebration of cannabis with our sponsors, vendors, and presenters on that particular evening. That was on Friday, yeah. June 14th. Can we go back to Dr. Otto? I mean, not, he's a jewel. And he has been on the show so many times. I think he was our very first guest. And, uh, but one of the things I think that we need to make a distinction, because so many people didn't, that 420 is a symbol for recreational or adult, whatever we want to call it, cannabis, where June 14 is the day that it became legal in Hawaii. So that day was set aside to recognize that it's been 19 years since the governor signed and made it legal med medical cannabis in Hawaii. So I just think that we need to make that distinction. I do too, it's really important. I think we should take every opportunity we can to celebrate the the wins and celebrate our heroes in our own medical cannabis space. And June 14th is, is the day to do that. This is the day when we recognized or accepted the medical use of cannabis in Hawaii. And having been 19 years ago, we think that that brings a certain amount of weight um, with that date to help people understand and, and maybe become more aware of how long patients have been working to um, get fair and equitable access to the this medicine. Do you have any idea of how many patients there are statewide uh, that um, go to the dispensaries that have the cards? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, we don't have transparency laws in Hawaii that would allow us access to that point of sale data as you might see in other states like Washington. So we don't really know how many patients are going to dispensaries well, no, versus I purchasing in the home market. Let me rephrase that. How many people are eligible? Not how many people actually go, but how many people oh. have cards? How many people have the, has the state issued the card to? Do you know? Great. 26,000. 26,000. That's incredible. That's incredible. It is. And it's 10,000 just on, on our island. And that's a lot of patients for a population of 200,000 or less. Now... You have dispensaries on the Big Island? We have two dispensaries, um, Big Island Grown and Hawaiian Ethos. Um, and Big Island Grown is open with multiple locations right now. And Hawaiian Ethos, uh, we expect to be opening any, any week now. Good. So my concern, of course, when we talked last year, was about having to come to Oahu and flying across the water and whether that was legal and all of that. So that's been taken care of. That's not an issue anymore. Well, it could still be an issue uh, depending on the person's understanding of the law. Um, so we have a lot of workers in between the law, the law's intent, and the patient. So these include people from the TSA, local law enforcement. These are people who largely have not been trained in all of the laws of all of the states of medical marijuana. So um, they don't necessarily understand 
um, the law. And oftentimes you can get detained at an airport, for example, just while that particular security team gets a better understanding from their commanders or, or from someone else on their team of whether or not they should put a patient in jail. Oh, I meant for an ounce of, oh no, that's, that's absurd. And then they say they don't have room in the prisons for hardened criminals, but they found room for, okay, <laughs> all right. So scratch that. So now what else happened at the weekend? Oh, well, so we went in from this fabulous celebration of Medical Cannabis Day on Friday night and just really imbibing everyone with love into Saturday morning at 9 o'clock when uh, Dr. Jim Berg, who has certified as many patients in our state as anyone else, uh, takes the stage, delivers this keynote address that is absolutely mind-blowing. A People's History of Medical Cannabis in Hawaii was the title of the talk to a full house. Everyone was completely quiet in the entire trade show um, listening to Dr. Berg deliver this. And then that was immediately followed by a medical cannabis discussion panel where we had um, all sorts of experts like uh, Wendy Gibson, cannabis nurse Wendy, um, Meifui Ma Ma Ma'o, um, we had um, uh, Jacqueline Moore from Big Island Grown Dispensary. There, I, I, I'm going to stop <laughs> naming the names <laughs> right there because I know I'm going to miss someone and I don't want to, but um, Dr. Otto was able to fly in that morning and fly out that afternoon and participate in that panel and that, that was incredibly helpful. So, so that was a, an intensely medical focused discussion that panel. Is that the one about the women of weed? Women of weed? No, uh, no, that one shaped up. We had an industry panel um, ready to go for uh, Sunday, and one of our media partners, uh, Hawaii Cannabis Magazine on Maui, um, said, hey, we've got some, some people for your industry panel. These are some experts for the panel. And it turned out that at that particular time, we didn't have any men signed up for that industry <laughs> panel yet. And, and the, the girls that run Hawaii Cannabis Magazine had these women uh, that were interested, and we had plenty of women that were interested as well. And so it just made sense in that moment in time to combine all of these industry experts by gender. And it's not something we would normally do, right? We, we go for the, the top talent. And in this particular case, the top talent were all women, and they were all ready to go. So that's how we ended up with a professional industry discussion forum or panel uh, comprised of women. And that, that one happened last, but on Saturday we also had the uh, uh, hemp production in Hawaii. So we really expanded this year into hemp. Um, thanks to our, our sponsor, Let's Talk Hemp, and the Hawaii Hemp Conference, um, the Colorado Hemp Company really enabled us to bring hemp into our event through this Healthy Hemp Emporium, we called it, which is a chance for cannabis or hemp curious to ask questions that they might not otherwise be comfortable asking in any other place in our, our communities. So. So that, we were super fortunate, and that kind of rounded off Saturday. Well, now, we need to take a break, and in 60 seconds, we'll be right back. But I want to talk about hemp and the health department, okay? So we will be Great. back in 60 seconds. Aloha. I'm Gwen Harris, the host here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of the supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks so much. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Sten Osterman, a host here on ThinkTech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness here on the island. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Mahalo.
Aloha, I'm Marcia. This is Cannabis Chronicles, and we're back. And we are talking to a dear, dear friend. Brent on the Big Island was the host of the Cannabis. Okay, let's get it right. What's the title, Brent? Where are you? The host. This year we we called it the Hawaii Cannabis Awareness Conference. Awareness Conference. Now, uh, just before we went to break, we talked about the women's uh, being there in numbers. And from what I've read, there are more women in the cannabis business in Hawaii than any place else. So, now, we have a trailer uh, produced by the people that made the movie. And so we're going to run just the 30-second trailer, okay? And then you can tell us about the movie. Great. Okay. I realized I wasn't just starting a business. I was, like, joining a revolution. I grew up in the dare generation of just say no, marijuana is a gateway drug. No more drug war! We're a movement, an industry, and consumers that are all working together. We got the power! <laughs> yes! I'm doing this film and I've never consumed cannabis. The plant is the core of the whole industry. Cannabis is now medicine. Cannabis is medicine. We want everyday doctors to be able to look at cannabis as just part of your toolbox. How are we going to figure out why this plant works so well if you don't even know what you're taking? How do we build standards for sustainability? We're doing the earth a favor. You know, we can't have a war on science. Elected officials have to make decisions based on data. Marijuana is not a gateway drug but marijuana offenses are a gateway into the criminal justice system. They said, where's all the other Mexicans? I said, in prison. We really wanted to make this about social justice. It is the door that you take your foot and you bust it down. This is starting to feel like a huge government conspiracy. It's shedding light on a lot of dark things in our culture that we all want to change and this is the catalyst for it. This is the first time you're really gonna be able to get in and have a voice. We have the opportunity to create the first billion dollar sector that is not dominated by men. So there is no glass ceiling, we're building it together. I believe walking the walk is the most powerful thing I can do. I feel like I have more questions now than when I started. <laughs> Brent, we're back. So I got that from uh, your website where they were advertising the film. So how was the film? Well, the film is excellent. Um, all of the players are, I think, unique at this particular time in history and in, in this industry. Um, you know, we're, we're still dealing with these gender issues um, and, and that's, that's the why for the film, is we really are seeking gender parity, um, where we have an equal amount of men and women involved. And so this film really underscores not just the need, but the skills and the talents and the uh, experience that uh, women have in our industry. You know, th this is a, a female plant that we're driving medicine from, and um, the, that feminine energy in the garden, for example, uh, is really welcomed by the plant. We see notice, noticeable changes when women are involved in the garden, but at the highest levels of organizations right now, um, women are um, really being empowered uh, in many instances uh, by films like this, by movies like this. And then what we're trying to do on the conferencing side is we're trying to lift that up um, and, and make sure that that's a reality in our community. Um, and, and not just for um, men and women. Um, you know, I was reminded this year to uh, consider dropping the binary of men and women and 
really look at all, all of the ways that people in our industry identify with themselves, their sexuality or their genders or whatever it is. And, and so we'll be looking to make that a reality in the it's kind of It's kind of hard now to say men and women or men or women or whatever. So it's easier to just sort of people, you know, just sort of let people. That, yeah, just people. Just let that go. Yeah. Now persons, we, humanity. Humanity, persons, whatever. Now, you had started to talk about hemp, and I have an issue with the health department, which is not surprising. Uh, the Department of Agriculture has worked tirelessly to create a hemp industry in Hawaii. The health department is trying to kill it. What are we going to do? The health department sends out a press release and says that you can't use hemp in uh, CBD because hemp is cannabis and it's illegal. Like, I mean, they just got it all wrong. What are we going to do when the health department issues the wrong information? What can we do? Well, um, the health department uh, is not engaged in, you know, protecting us from all of the corn and soy that's being drenched in pesticides. And when they're not involved in that discussion of what do we do with this corn on the side of the road that any child could pick up um, just on the side of the road and, and get poisoned from, yet we think that zero hemp crops are dangerous. I think the Department of Health are, by not having priorities for our health care and not having objectives to pursue a healthy population as opposed to a safe population, they've crossed over into the Department of Safety's uh, line of work. And, and, and in doing so, I think they make themselves irrelevant. Um, we certainly don't want to get on their radar because they'll put patients in jail, just as they have been doing. Um, but, you know, we, we don't want to be on their radar, but at the same time, we just can't take them seriously on some of their positions because they're, they're not trustworthy. I know, and when they send out a press release that says hemp is cannabis, therefore it's illegal and you can't take it, you can't, uh, and they were closing down people here on Oahu that had uh, hemp, uh, not hemp, but CBD products. Um, right. it, it, it's just an incredible thing that here we have part of the state working to create an industry where young people can grow into the industry and stay in Hawaii rather than go off to school on the mainland and not come home. And then we have a health department trying to kill it. It makes no sense. Okay. It doesn't. It's harmful. Um, I don't think that the health department should be involved in economic decisions or farming decisions. Um, well, farming decisions, is, they're not involved because you're right. You know, they spray all kind of chemicals on the food and the corn and soy are just loaded with chemicals. You know, right, the, the fertilizers. Right. Yeah, ten, 10 feet off of main roads, you know, the, these, are, these are harmful products that are sitting literally, um, you know, our pets are eating them, yet the problem is hemp somehow, and it's non-existent as a crop so far. Yeah, and uh, North Carolina and Kentucky both had uh, tobacco for hundreds of years, and then when we shifted to not smoking, their economy went tailspin. Now they are doing growing hemp. They have universities in North Carolina has a university where they teach about hemp, how to grow it, how to manufacture it, how to do these things. And their economy is thriving based on the hemp. And our Department of Agriculture seems to want to do that same thing, and the health department is saying, you can't do that. So, right, right. 
So we, yeah, so, you know, th- th- this affects everyone. Uh, and, you know, in legal states where, um, you know, someone is farming chickens in their backyard, you know, those farmers now have an ability to grow a little bit of hemp on, you know, on the corner of their property and feed all their chickens for free. And this is more nourishing for those chickens, making better ag- eggs for us to consume and providing nourishment. Hemp, hemp is a food product. And being denied a food product because of some of the compounds um, have been, have, they, they failed to research some of the compounds in the ways that they find are helpful, like landmark studies. It's just absurd. And, and to allow all of the pesticides that they have allowed and continue to allow, you know, they're not giving us information on our water supply. And at the same time, they're supporting this, this biogas or this biomass giant furnace up on our Hamakua coast, which is spewing out all of this stuff into the air and the water, and the Department of Health is supporting that. So they're just making themselves irrelevant, and we know that their leadership is a direct conduit to the governor, and in fact, um, you know, they have been without any solid leadership um, for at least the last five years while all of this is going on. We need some policies and priorities that will... Um, prioritize the health of our people um, with other food products. So, well, I, <laughs> yes, you know, we need to look at that, and uh, and this schism between the departments when they all fall under the governor. In fact, I read that the governor of Hawaii is the most powerful governor in the United States. He has 18 departments that answer directly to him, and yet we have this schism. So, you know, oh my goodness, we are just about out of time. I love talking to you. We will have to do this again soon because we need to figure out how to deal with this schism. We really do. So, again, Brent, thank you so much for all you do and always being there for us. And I have oh, to thank you. say aloha. <laughs>